Climate change is one major challenge for the entire world, and renewable energy is one effective tool we have to fight against the issue. Korea, too, is following the international trend with its Renewable Energy 3020 Implementation Plan. What will be the environmental and economic impacts of renewable energy? We delve deeper into that question on the Chamber this week, where I'm your host, Panita Bajaj. With experts from four Nordic embassies in Korea, we bring together an array of knowledge and experience to tackle the challenge of climate change. And for those of you who are interested in climate change, sustainable energy, and Korea's economy, we are here at the Oil Tank Reserve for the third Nordic Talks right here in Seoul, the economic hub of Northeast Asia. So without further ado, let's step into the chamber. Combating air pollution and climate change is our nation's top priority and the NCCA Welcome to the Chamber. Today on the show, we have four very special guests with us today. We have Ellen Sogbroten, Commercial Counselor of Innovation Norway. Johan Chun, Swedish Trade Commissioner and Country Manager, Business Sweden. Good to be here. Thank you for joining us. Martin Rune Hoekser, Executive Director of Innovation Center Denmark in Seoul. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. And Maria Kauko, Attaché and Head of Economic Section at the Finnish Embassy. Thank you very much for joining us today. Welcome to the Chamber as we are going to be talking about going green. And as the subject allows, we've tried to go green by not turning on the AC. So you yes, might be can feel that. sweating a little bit today. <laughs> Um, but of course, I don't know if you noticed, um, but we've had blue skies and it's been a rare sight for many months so far. Um, but to combat this battle of fine dust and pollution in the case of Korea, climate change for the rest of the world as well, we're turning to renewable energy, climate safe energy solutions and things of that nature. Now, Sweden retained the first spot, number one uh, on the World Economic Forum's Energy Transition Index this year. And of course, it was followed by Switzerland, Norway, Finland, uh, Denmark as well. Now, Nordic countries have been dominating these top spots for years and years. And for the rest of the world, we're thinking, how do you do that? What is your secret to so the key to these lavish accomplishments? Uh, I'm sure it's not that easy and it's not just an overnight success story, but let's talk about how maybe your respective countries have uh, accomplished these, uh, these things. Is it, is it just an overnight story? How, what about policies or strategies and things like that? Can we start with Norway? In terms of uh, renewable energy, uh, we have been uh, having hydropower as our main source for 100 years. Wow. 
Uh, we are a country with high mountains and deep fjords, and we are uh, really uh, using that source of energy. Uh, and that brought us to uh, our industrialization and the further development of hydropower. So 98% of our electricity comes from hydropower. Yes, it's very fascinating how you can take advantage of the nature around you and create electricity and power out of this as well. What about for Sweden? Yes, yeah, Sweden <coughs> has similar, so not 98% uh, hydropower, but uh, about 60% uh, renewable energy, and a lot of it comes from hydropower. And I think, as you said, I don't think there's such a thing as a short-term fix or overnight uh, solution, but I think Swedish government and Swedish society, as well as uh, and the other Nordic countries, has been very long-term you know, work with a lot of different regulations, policies that has made this uh, possible. Yeah. I think in Korea today you talk a lot about smart cities and you know half the population basically lives in this city in Seoul and I think all the Nordic countries and in Sweden also have been putting focus on smart city development for a very long time so with things like district heating with you know simple measures like you know bus lanes and uh, bicycle lanes just uh, building construction big insulation and uh, uh, cooling systems from the start that has been planned. So I think uh, there are many measures actually behind this. Sure. Yeah. Um, and of course, if we talk about cycling, Denmark, you know, Copenhagen is just such a bike friendly area. I mean, it, it's certainly something that lasted quite a f long time to get to where we are. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, I would say maybe following the same note as uh, was said by Johan. Uh, I mean, quite many different uh, activities, different um, different uh, policies has been put in place. I mean, if we just trace back history just a little bit, I mean, the wind turbine uh, back in 1891, uh, we can go that far back. Wow. To, to get sort of a first wind turbine in, in Denmark that was producing electricity to, to a school. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so today, 60% uh, uh, equivalent to, to Sweden is coming from sustainable energy and from, from wind. Yeah. Well, and for Finland as well. Um, well, yes, so I, I think that there are a lot of like uh, similarities in terms of like Nordic countries. So many of the um, actions and measures that were already mentioned like apply to Finland as well. So it, it has been a long history. And I think like one of the, the driving drivers for like Nordic countries in general has been the fact that like we're cold countries and it, it requires a lot of heating. We're also countries with long distances. That means a lot of uh, emissions in terms of transportation. So we have really been forced to come up with these new ideas and new innovations, like how to tackle these emissions. Because otherwise, like, like the emission rates would be just like way too high per capita if you look at our countries. You know, speaking of going green, there are so many different terms that have popped up here and there. Some are quite unfamiliar to me. And for Sweden, um, supporting this renewable energy, they came up with the green electricity certificate obligating um, retail power suppliers since 2003 to go green. And reading about it seemed like it was kind of a level of how green you are, how eco-friendly you are. So could you explain to us um, what kind of policy this is? Sure, so it's quite technical, but I'll try to simplify it yes, a little bit. Please. So basically, there are two aims why this was introduced so over 15 years ago, as you say. And one is basically to incentivize producers of energy to try to use green sources for electricity. And then second, of course, you can incentivize people, but uh, industry has to make money, so basically to lower the cost. So the way it works is for each megawatt hour that is produced with green energy sources, uh, the government grants a certificate that the company receives, the producer, uh, and this certificate they can keep on their own or they can sell it. Uh, so it's actually since 2012 together with Norway, we have a shared um, open market oh, where wow. this can be sold to market price. Um, and as for Norway, we talked about what 98% of the country's electricity production comes from renewable energy sources. For Seoul, it takes a while for us just to grasp a subject of, okay, we're getting electric taxis and it's only been a few, but 
for Norway, almost 100% the entire nation is going green. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, I think f Norway has uh, developed a lot over the last years and the use of electricity has increased. But I think also that uh, products are um, becoming smarter and take less electricity. So the focus on using less is also there. And I think I would also like to bring in the sustainability concept. And the whole idea about not using more uh, than what we can reproduce or uh, leave also for future generations is, uh, is kind of in our backbone, I think. And also being um, in the nature and exposed to the nature like we are in our Nordic countries uh, really makes us value nature and we see the importance of keeping it, keeping it clean, uh, and using the nature. Well, it is indeed the idea of taking advantage of nature versus taking granted what you have around you that is supposed to be for your benefit. Um, now it's turning into pollution and things like that. If we move on to Denmark, I mean, a wind energy, the highest proportion of wind power in the world, and that's quite impressive as well. What kind of energy policies does your country pursue in relation to renewable energy? I think when it comes to policies, we have been spearheading also uh, within the European Energy Union that, uh, that wind should also have a, a stronger focus. I think among the member countries, it's, uh, it's around 15% and, and Denmark is using 40% of the energy sources from wind and the 60% that we have in our total energy mix is coming from other sustainable energy sources as well. But I think when it comes to wind and when it comes to the wind industry, uh, that has created a lot of new jobs. Uh, in Denmark. So that's also something to bear in mind when speaking to my Korean colleagues. It's also a growth engine. So there is uh, also the economy of uh, the, the, the perspective on economy that you're actually creating new jobs, you're creating new industries with these uh, within the green transition. And what we can see in Denmark is that uh, one out of 25 jobs in the central region of Denmark where we have the big plants and we have the big uh, production facilities is actually related to, to the wind industry. This is uh, very interesting to look into how can we uh, to make that transition and create new jobs and create new growth and actually to involve the civil society and policymakers into taking decisions around uh, this transition. Sure, I think uh, thinking bigger, looking at the bigger picture is key to going green and Finland is no different as well, uh, leading the way in Europe in terms of you know, smart city development and things like biomass business to increase the share of renewable energy in the country. Now, if you were to explain this to somebody who has no idea about biomass business and things of like that, how can you elaborate so we, it's easy to digest this term? Right, so it's like, as in life in general, you really have to build on your strengths. So Finland is really a country of forests and a country of ICT. That means that we have a lot of that like indigenous forest-based biomass available. And in Finland, they are mainly used for um, combined heat and power production. It's also possible to make biofuels out of this, um, like wood residues. Wow. And um, it's not only like from wood, but also we have a lot of technologies to convert like waste into energy. So basically using any kind of residues, you can like uh, produce energy as well. And that's really handy like if you want to, for example, provide like um, energy in a more decentralized manner for like a local farm, for example. So they might, might have this their own um, power production based on the residues from the agriculture, for example. So this is like the, the, the concept of biomass. Yeah, not letting anything go to waste. You're recycling uh, exactly, every single thing. Exactly, yes. Well, uh, as you mentioned, Martin, uh, it's also about creating new jobs. And according to a report by the International Renewable Energy Agency, over 10 million people work in renewable energy sector worldwide today. And um, of course, that is expected to grow well into the future as well. Hopefully, we can see many more jobs in this sector. But um, we also know that there are many positive results in a lot of Nordic countries. So could you share with us 
um, in your respective countries, the success story of how that came to be? Yeah, you? just uh, as a comment about policies then. So, uh, as you know, the Nordic countries are all leading when it comes to renewable energy. But Sweden threw down the gauntlet a few years ago in 2015. Then Swedish government said we're going to be the first fossil free country mm -hmm. by 2040 mm -hmm. uh, and uh, basically challenged uh, our Nordic neighbors and the rest of the world and also to be completely uh, carbon neutral by 2045. And to Martin's comments, I think it's exciting to see a lot of new companies starting up, startups within this field in green energy, but also that you shouldn't forget is the existing industry. If traditional industry cannot transform into more uh, sustainable solutions, I think they will be out of business long term. Yeah, I, can, I think that is true because I think many countries, you know, even with the Paris Agreement, we're like, yes, there are so many plans, we want to do this, we want to do this by this year and that year. And then when push comes to shove, we're just quite silent about things and it's only the talk that happens, but not a lot of action. So this is where, you know, the, the leading countries can come in and say, we can help, we have these solutions, we have things like that. How about for Finland? Well, first of all, I'm really happy that Johan, you, you raised the, the Nordic challenge mm -hmm. and put it on the table because like, we have a Nord, uh, new government in place in Finland now and um, they have set the target to be carbon neutral by uh, 2035. And this is a really ambitious um, target like globally. But like, that also shows that like, we really don't see the um, climate change and green tra transition as a burden like for our economies but it's really a source of new business and source of new jobs there's an estimation by the european union uh, that like with the current investment plans there will be uh, some 50,000 new jobs in europe by uh, 2020 and then some half a million jobs by 2030 and that's only with the current like investment plans and obviously a lot of countries are now like updating their um, climate uh, targets. Sure, and if there is a lot of potential, there's more room for growth and soon people will jump on this business idea. It certainly is a big endeavor. And of course, in order to raise awareness of climate change and this uh, green transition that we're trying to be a part of, four Nordic embassies in Korea jointly organized this event. Let's take a look at the Nordic Talks. On June 27, a very special symposium took place at a cultural complex in Seoul. It was none other than Nord Talks, organized by four Nordic embassies in Seoul and sponsored by the Nordic Council of Ministers and the Seoul Metropolitan Government. After a very successful first round of the event in January, the third was held in June for Nordic countries to share their views on the various challenges facing the international community. Interest is growing and the event attracts more participants each time. The theme for the third round is climate change and the green transition. Climate change is the single most important challenge we face as a global community. In this regard, I appreciate that Nord Talks has provided a platform to talk about such a timely and important topic. Data show changes to Korea's climate too, including temperature, rainfall, and fine dust pollution. Driven by the shared desire to deal with these issues, this round of talks got a lot of attention. The speakers of the day were Norwegian polar explorer Bowe Osland and Danish space expert Michael Linden Wormla. Well, I wanted to give a clear message to, to the guests that uh, things are changing and things are changing in a quite rapid way. Uh, and uh, the recent calculations based on the most recent data, they tell us that uh, if we do, don't do anything, then, for example, the entire ice sheet of Greenland will be gone in 1,000 years. And that's a long time from now, but changes are already happening, and they're happening at an ever-increasing pace. So the very short message is, do something and do it now. Osland offered a first-hand account of climate change in the polar regions, how it affects our daily lives, and what we can do to solve the climate crisis. In this 
is the actual sea ice uh, just a few years ago. And there you can see the enormous amount of area that had melted in just a few decades. My main message was to, to tell the audience what is happening with the ice in the Arctic, that it's melting and climate change is happening here and now and also reflecting on melting of the glacier and the rise of the sea level this century, which could be as much as one meter. I, I had a challenge for Korea that they should take a leading role in this transition. And I think you can do it because you have a high-tech society, you have a lot of innovation going, uh, and you have good economy. And in, in the end of the day, I think it uh, will uh, produce opportunities if you can take that leading role. So that's my challenge to Korea. Take that leading role. Make the world a better place to live in. In Europe, there are many different issues in the world. There are many different issues in the 생생하게 현장감 있게 그런 걸 다시 한번 느낄 수 있는 자리이지 않았나 싶습니다. Nord Talks promotes equality, openness and progress through dialogue about major social topics. It's no doubt that this event has planted the seeds of a greener world for us and our children. In our point of view, President Moon Jae-in recently visited three Nordic countries as well, and there he pledged to expand cooperation in the new renewable energy field. Um, well, what kind of research projects or other joint efforts are being made in this area you can talk about? Yeah, if I comment, first make a Nordic comment, I think the joint vehicle in the Nordics is something called uh, the Nordic Council of Ministers, where there are a lot of actually joint project calls for sustainable development projects. And there, I mean, it's open calls and a lot of project funding available for uh, other nations to join also. And if I may add, yeah. they're also supporting our supporting, Nord Talks. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Uh, and then specifically about Sweden, I mean, similar to you guys, when uh, the president was there two weeks ago with a big uh, business delegation, more than 100 companies in total, so a lot of different industries that were in focus, but one of the areas in focus were startups, and of course, uh, and there were like 10 MOU signed, so one of the focus, of course, new companies uh, with new sustainable technologies and um, that can benefit society. Uh, so yeah, there are exciting times ahead. I think. Sure, absolutely, especially because you know our ambitions are you know 30 years, 40 years. We want to be 100% um, using renewable power in the near future. Uh, then, last but not least, do we have any words of advice that you can offer the Korean government and society in general as well of how we can accept this change, go for this change, and go towards going more green? I think uh, the government is moving in the right direction. The policies are being set uh, and uh, I hope that it will follow through. But I also just very shortly will say we are all in it and we are all responsible and we can all do something. So that is my um, best advice, I think, uh, both to Korea but also to the rest of the world. Yeah. Well, what about Martin? Any, any words of advice for Korea? Uh, we had a royal visit uh, by our crown prince and crown princess uh, last, uh, last month and the whole backdrop of that visit was actually the sustainable development goals. So I think if you go to companies, you go to politicians, you go to municipalities, uh, civic society, they're thinking about sustainable development goals. And uh, what we did there was actually to involve the youth because they are the ones who are going to live with the consequences if we don't do anything. Mm -hmm. So by introducing youth and introducing the students to provide solutions around uh, some challenges that the, the companies were facing, uh, that was really uh, tremendous to see uh, what kind of ideas that the new generation could come up with. Mm -hmm. So I think just a word of advice involve the youth. Yes, absolutely. I think that's a great word, you know. They have so many different ideas that we haven't even thought of yet. Certainly can't uh, just discount and disregard the youth's creativity and things of like that nature. What about you? 
for Finland? Um, well, I, I think, like first of all, that obviously, like every country, like it has to find their own ways to go through the energy transition. But like a word of advice would probably be that it's good to keep in mind, like the sort of big picture and like the thing that this has to be done in a very comprehensive manner. Be brave. You can definitely make it. Yeah, it's yeah. a bold step to go forward. Well, today we talked about you know the Nordic countries' efforts to. Uh, create a low carbon world and of course Korea's efforts to go for this new renewable energy transition. That's all the time we have for today. Hopefully you can join us on social media where we'd love to answer your curiosities about Korea's economy and what goes on around the world. That's all the time we have for today. We'll see you next week, same time, same place on The Chamber. President Moon Jae-in says he hopes to upgrade South Korea's relations with Saudi Arabia.